Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of the video series where we are putting together the CY model 84 inch Lavochkin LA7. In this episode, we're gonna be talking all about the retracts, the included retracts, setting up the struts, the gear doors, which I forgot to mention when I did the unboxing video, I apologize about that, and then putting them in the wing. Now, just a reminder, this series is not about selling this aircraft, it's not about bragging about CY model, it's really just to give a potential buyer an idea of what this model is about and what you're getting yourself into. So, that being said, I'm equally happy if I show something that makes someone decide, okay, that's that's not really what I want. Um, I'm going to pass on this model, but I'll be just as happy if I show something in this series that makes someone says, oh, I like how that's done. I'm going to go ahead and get one. So either way, I'm fine. That being said, probably the most talked about feature of this model and the larger 100cc version from CY model of the LA7 is that the landing gear are not scale. On the scale plane, they actually, when the gears are retracted in the wings, the wheels are almost touching directly in the middle of the bottom of the fuse. And in this case, uh, they're pretty spread apart. And that's probably because this is a two-piece wing that's joined at the fuselage. And there's actually a part of the wing that's like that joiner part of the fuselage in this model. If that's a problem for you, that's totally fine. A lot of people don't like that. Um, and that would be totally cool to, for you to say, you know, I'm not interested in this model. Now, if that is okay, like me, it doesn't bother me. In fact, I enjoy knowing about it, but it doesn't bother me. So I'm gonna go forward with it. But there are some people that have actually modified the wing. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. And in fact, I'm gonna post in the description below a really nice thread on RC Universe about building the larger 100cc version and a lot of modifications uh, that we'll talk about going through. So not quite the same as the larger version, but you'll get a lot of good ideas from that thread. So without any further ado, let's start playing with these read tracks, head over to the bench and get to work. Let's start off with the retract units and how they work. We'll get these all hooked up together, show you how it works. So each unit will plug into the control unit and on, the, on that side there, there are two back gear and one front gear if you're using tricycle, but we're just using the back gear. We're gonna hook up the power to a 2S LiPo and then the signal from the control unit. I'm just using a servo tester here to test things and you can see here, I'll move the servo tester and we have actuation on the unit. So we'll take the strut and it fits pretty nicely right into the unit and we're gonna put this little nut on and this is a brace for the gear doors. It's fixed on one side with the Phillips screwdriver and that's actually gonna go through the gear door and on the other side with a grub screw. We can tighten the grub screw later but just showing you how it fits nice and snug right into the unit. Now, there is uh, the tightening bolt here is actually a Torx screw and it's a T20 Torx bit. So hopefully you have one of these T20 Torx heads. We'll put the strut on and it's pretty self-explanatory it gets tightened down now you are going to have to really wrench this down and it's going to be a complete surface hold it's going to clamp that whole piece around the strut so really prepare to to torque that thing down And also, if you don't have a T20 bit, it does come with a T20 Allen key for you. But let's move over to the axle, and you can see there's one edge that's kind of grouted out, and that's gonna be the outside of the wheel, and we'll show you this in a second. But we just slide the axle through the hole at the top of the strut, and the axle itself is held in with two larger grub screws. And we'll secure that with a two millimeter hex driver. Now, of course, you are going to want to use Loctite after you get everything set up and aligned the way you want. I'm not going to put that in right now, but. Okay. 
All right, after the axle is secured, there is a spacer that goes on the axle in between the strut and the wheel. Then we'll slide the wheel on. And if you have the axle flush mount with the back side of the strut, you'll see you'll have just enough space where you have that little indentation and that's where this wheel collar is gonna go. A lot of times we know we're used to um, you know, grouting out a small flat area, but because the end of the axle is, uh, it's grouted out, I guess, uh, it locks in there perfectly and that collar is held on with a 1.5 millimeter grub screw. And again, just to show you, make sure either if you like the stick or the liquid, you will be going through and needing to lock tight all these grub screws. But I'm gonna wait till after I get it up on the wings so we can align the struts the way we want before we tighten anything down. All right, here are the gear doors. And again, I apologize, I missed these when I did the unboxing video, but they're pretty self-explanatory. They come with two holes in them and they line up one with the Phillips head. You'll see a tapped hole on the, right in the middle of the strut. That screw goes there. And then that second screw will go into that little brace that we slid on over the strut before we attached it. Now what this allows is that allows the strut to compress without the gear door moving. And that's nice. However, because it's set up this way, you can't angle the gear door at all. The gear door is gonna be exactly angled with the strut. So hopefully that doesn't cause problems when we go to do the alignment, but we'll check that out after we get them in the wings. All right, here's the wing and it's already cut and open for you and this is where we're going to drill. But first let's show the wheel wells. If you want to use the wheel wells, especially if you're using a gas or petrol engine, uh, you probably, probably a good idea to put those in and they just slide in there and you'll see you're gonna have to cut the end open where the strut goes and then trim around the top. I'm going electric, so I'm not going to use the wheel wells and I can always put them in later. Here is the place for the retract unit. And unfortunately, I was so excited to just plop these in there. They don't fit. And I think, I think it's done exactly. And I think there's just some glue and residue. Uh, and so really, it just barely doesn't fit. So we're gonna take a Dremel and just trim a little bit from both sides to get that to go in. And I was a little bit worried at first, but I really hardly took anything off and it plops right in. So we should be good. All right, that's much better. So now we have that unit retracting and let's go ahead and fit and make sure that we're getting good action and the whole strut and wheel go in and out just fine. So I'll just set that in there and we'll see some of this retract action. And if you're wondering why I'm holding the back of the unit in is because with the leverage and the weight, that wouldn't work unless you hold it in before you secure it in there. So we're good to go. Next up, let's just throw the gear door on there and see what it's going to look like because we're, we want to find exactly where we're mounting. And you can see there's a little play. You can slide it forward and backwards. And from what I found, you're not going to be able to have the gear doors match up exactly and that's another problem it's not a problem but it's just it's one of the byproducts of having the gear door attached to that middle that middle screw there because you can't slide the whole gear door up and down so i found exactly where i want to i'm going to take my little um punch little poker and make some divots so we can identify these holes and then we're going to be really careful I'm gonna start with a 1 16th and I'm gonna go up three sizes and just drill these the right, right way to make sure these holes are nice and strong.
All right, so now we have the holes. We're gonna run the included bolts through just to establish the threads. And then I I didn't put this in the video, but I sanded the top of the holes to get those nice and clean. And we'll go through with some thin CA, get it down in those holes to really set those threads. And we'll let this sit overnight. All right, we're almost there. Now it's the next day. We're going to go ahead and slide the unit back in here and we will go ahead and attach it for the final time. Line it up over those holes. Now, because we use some CA, these these screws will go in a little bit tougher than they did the day before, just because of the CA and establish those threads, so, but we're good. So we, now we have the strut with the gear door on. We'll get that and we'll torque it down with the T20 Torx bit. We'll torque it down with the T20 Torque bit. And now we have the gear installed with the gear door and boom, there we go. That's where I like it. Because we can't move the gear door up and down, that's kind of where we're we're stuck with, but it's good enough for me. All right, guys, that was the landing gear episode. Thanks so much for watching. Next episode, we're doing flaps and ailerons. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.